The book of Isaiah, part 12. As we have discovered in reading this book, we have gone back and forth from uh, historical types to prophetical types. We had seen in the last lecture that the king, Hezekiah, had, uh, had 15 years added to his life. And the miracle that was shown him to prove that uh, God had the power to do this, which he should have known anyway, since he besought the Lord in uh, such a prayerful way, was that God would bring the sun back 10 degrees. In other words, about 40 minutes. And as I alluded to when we taught this in the book of Second Kings, NASA has backed this up. Um, between the time of the day that Joshua asked for the sun to stand still till he defeated his enemies and this event where the sun went back 40 minutes you have one full day and NASA found that there is one full day missing from Earth's history and a lot of people call this urban myth and uh, superstition and stuff like that there's plenty of websites on it both pro and con there will always be doubters and there will always be those that believe it. Um, but anyway, we're going back and forth here. And we had seen a type of the elect. Or actually it wasn't even a type of the elect because God said, mine elect. And through that type of elect we had also seen the type of Jesus Christ. In other words, the Messiah prophesied of, even from this Old Testament book of Isaiah. So we're going to continue along this vein. We're going to pick it up here in Isaiah 43. We're going to be speaking of Jacob, which encompasses really all 12 tribes of Israel. But uh, we're learning here from type and example from historical um, figures that they are types of things to come. They are foreshadows. They are templates. In other words, the king of Assyria and the king of Babylon being representative of the king of Assyria or the king of Babylon of the end times. In other words, Satan Antichrist. Anyway, we're going to pick it up here in Isaiah 43 in chapter, or, or, uh, 40, chapter 43 and verse 1. And before we do, as always, let us go to our Father's throne and ask for guidance and wisdom as we study from this His most holy and precious word. Our Heavenly Father, our Sovereign King and Ruler and Creator, we come before you this day, Father, and we ask you to bless us with wisdom and knowledge, Father. We know that you are the dispenser of wisdom and knowledge and the revealer of secrets so we ask you to show us these secrets father from your word through whatever means historical type example or prophetical or even literal and we ask father that you also open the eyes and ears of all who study with us that they too may receive enlightenment and truth and knowledge and wisdom from these studies and walk in your path, Father, which you have lit, so that they do not fall off into outer darkness and deception. We ask that your hand always be upon these studies, Father. And we ask these things faithfully, Father, believing nothing wavering, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. Amen. So Isaiah 43 in verse 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. In other words, he created Jacob and he formed Israel of Jacob not only did he rename Jacob Israel, which means the prince that prevails to God, with God, which why he is called by his name, 
but also the sons of Jacob, which would be the patriarchs of the twelve tribes of Israel, which would be a peculiar people unto God, a chosen people. Not chosen because they're better than anyone else, but because God had a job for them to do. And God has been rougher on Israel than he has been the rest of his people, in other words, the rest of his children of this planet Earth, because he's whipping them into shape and correcting them. And part of this correction was that he was fulfilling the promises that he had promised them if they walked contrary to him, and that was that they would be scattered abroad and they would go into captivity. And so far in this time, Judah has not gone into captivity. We have seen that um, Judah will go into captivity through this book. And we'd also seen Hezekiah make a really ignorant mistake in showing the uh, representatives of Babylon all the treasures of his house. In other words, all his armory, all his gold and silver, probably the house of the Lord. There was not anything that he did not show them. And this is going to turn out to be a fatal mistake in the future. Verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. When thou and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Now you've got three examples here. You've got when thou pass through the waters, okay? They pass through the Red Sea. They pass through the waters. But what are the wa waters symbolic of in the book of Revelation? The peoples. In other words, as you pass through this earth age, I will be with you. And when they pass through the rivers, what river did they pass through? The Jordan. Joshua first, then Elijah, then Elisha. And they shall not overflow they. In other words, the flood that Satan casts out of his mouth is not going to overflow Israel. It will overflow some of them, but not the prince that prevails with God. Again, the prince that prevails with God prevails because he is with God. But without God, he will, he will not prevail. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall flame kindle upon thee. Well, read the book of Daniel. What happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were in the fire, and they were not harmed of it. And when the Lord returns as a devouring fire, those that are for him will not be harmed of the fire that comes from his mouth. Verse 3. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. In other words, he even names himself as the Savior. This is another way that you can prove that God was Jesus Christ in the flesh. God with us, Emmanuel. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, and Ethiopia and Seba for thee. And of course, um, this refers to the land of Cush, the land of Mizraim. In other words, where they were held bondage. And also the land that they came out of. Uh, even Ethiopia having to do with uh, the land of Sinai, the Midianites. Uh, if to, to verify this, you can go and read uh, that Aaron and Miriam... Moses' um, brother and sister were angry with him for marrying a Midianite woman, or an Ethiopian woman. Of course, we know who Moses married. He married Zipporah, who was the daughter of Jethro, the Midianite. She was called an Ethiopian because of land association. But she was not an Ethiopian woman. Many people try to use this to say that uh, she was a different race, or that Israel is a different race. However, any scholar who is worth his salt, who has studied the word in depth, knows that this is not the truth. <clears throat> in fact, it is nothing more than a doctrine that is being taught. A doctrine of men. A tradition of men. 
and it's a fairly new sprang up doctrine. Verse 4. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. In other words, Israel would always have the victory. It, those that came against him were not going to be able to stand against him. That is, until the day that Israel started walking contrary to God, and then the reverse was true. They were taken captive. They were made bond servants. Because they obeyed not the Lord their God, nor did they walk in his commandments or his statues. In fact, they forgot him completely and started worshipping Baal and Chemosh and Ashtaroth and a host of other gods of the land of Canaan, of the children which God had originally driven out of the land before the children of Israel. Verse 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Now, you've got a small type in here. I will bring thy seed from the east. In other words, I will bring your generations, your children from the east, and gather thee from the west. Well, when Israel migrated, which way did they go? They went from the Middle East towards the west and entered into Europe. Some of them even going through North Africa, crossing the Straits of Gibraltar and Morocco, and going into Spain and entering Europe that way. But it's been documented a number of times who the children of Israel are today, even though many of them do not know it, and many others do not believe it. Verse 6. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar. In other words, now we've got all four directions. And it was written that Israel would be scattered to the four winds. They would be scattered to the four directions. And they have been scattered to the four directions. In other words, the entire compass of the world. And my daughters from the ends of the earth. In other words, any which way you can point on the compass in a complete circle of the earth, that's where Israel has been dispersed to. Verse 7. Even everyone that is called by my name. I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Now that said, even everyone that is called by my name. Well, who is the name that we, we are called by to, that he created him for his glory? It is, of course, Christ. Again, the, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom, thus opening the Holy of Holies to all men. So everyone that is called by his name, which his name, Yahweh, is a derivative, or uh, the name Yahshua, which is what Jesus Christ was called when he walked upon the earth in his native tongue, is a derivative of his father's name, Yahweh, which people call Jehovah. Some call him Yahweh. Verse 8. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. In other words, they've got eyes and ears, but they don't see and they don't listen. They don't have ears to hear so that they can understand. They don't perceive. Verse 9. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this? And show us the former things. Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified. Or let them hear and say it is truth. In other words, you've got the choice there. If you can declare this, the former things, which no one can, then bring forth your witnesses, and I'll hear you, that you may be justified. Or sit there and listen and hear and say, it is the truth. In other words, God's word. Verse 10. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, 
and understand that I am He. Again, you've got I am, the, the sacred name, Yah. Before me, there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. And this doesn't mean that God will pass at any time. It just means, uh, before me there was no God, and I am here, and there shall be not another after me. Verse 11. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Verse 12. I have declared and have saved. I have showed when there was no strange God among you. In other words, before you entered the land of Canaan, there was no strange God among you. When I brought you out of the land of Egypt, there was no strange God among you. Again, lowercase on the G. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. In other words, the only God. Verse 13. Yea, before the day was, I am he. In other words, before, before even the foundation of the world, before there was day. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? In other words, who, who shall uh, prevent it, or stop it, or, or have anything to say about it? God's purpose will be fulfilled. Verse 14. Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer. And of course, Christ is our kinsman Redeemer. The Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon and have brought down their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. In other words, uh, swift vessels. Verse 15. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. And this is another reason why I've said a number of times, God did not want man to have kings over them. Because there has never been a perfect king. And it doesn't matter who you look to in the Bible as a king, or since then, even into uh, history reaching to our time from that time, there has never been a perfect king. Not even King David was perfect. For he did cause the murder of Uriah the Hittite so that he could have his wife Bathsheba. And then Solomon, who was the wisest of all, fell and began worshipping false gods and building temples to gods. And uh, Solomon and David were about as good as you get in the king line. There were kings after them that were good, but even they fell short. There is no man that walks in the flesh that doesn't fall short. That's just the way it is. And a lot of people say, well, I'm going to wait till I'm a little older and wiser and uh, less full of sin before I come to God. Well, that's not going to cut it because God knows every sin you do and every sin that you have done. That's why he gave us Christ, so that we will have repentance. That is for those who believe and who ask repentance. Verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh the way in the sea, and the path in the mighty waters. And again, uh, what is the sea symbolic of? The book of Revelation, the sea is the people. The waters of the world are the people, the mighty waters. But you've also got that connotation again, that the sea was parted for Israel to pass through on dry land, and the Jordan was parted so that they could pass through on dry land. In other words, a way was made for them, a path. Verse 17. Which bringeth forth the chariot and the horse, the army of the power and the power. They shall lie down together and they shall not rise. They are extinct and quenched as tow. And tow is of course the wick of a candle. In other words, it can be snuffed out very easily. Verse 18. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old? In other words, uh, don't you remember when I brought you up out of Egypt, and how God stood with you and showed himself before you, and gave you the laws and spoke to you with his own mouth? Now, of course, the people of this time would, would not know of that 
uh, as far as um, God speaking to them, except for Isaiah and Hezekiah and a few other choice ones. But the legends, and I shouldn't even say legends because that kind of takes away from the truth of it, uh, the reality of what God had done for his people should have been told from generation to generation to generation, as Moses said, and as Joshua warned them. Verse 19. Behold, I will now do a new thing, and it shall spring forth. Shall not ye know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Again, a way in the wilderness is a path, and rivers in the desert means there's going to be water to drink in the desert. If you've ever been in the desert and uh, felt how hot it is and how dry and arid, a, a river is a welcome thing. And of course, Christ is our river. He's our living water. Verse 20. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I gave waters in the wilderness and the rivers and the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. In other words, God made sure that they were taken care of, his chosen people. When they were in the wilderness, the wilderness of Zan and Kadesh. And the wilderness here is also symbolic of uh, the wilderness of the world, how desolate it is without God. Or without the knowledge of God, verse 21. This people I have formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. And, of course, it was amongst the tribes of Israel that first accepted God and Christ and has taken that um, truth to the world that the gospel should be published amongst all nations. That's what Israel's job was. It's not that they're better than anyone else, but a lot of people can't see past the color of skin or fleshly concerns to allow the truth to enter into their minds. Verse 22 But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. Thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. In other words, they forgot God. They didn't call upon him. When they were in trouble, they didn't call upon him. And one of the promises that Moses and Joshua gave was that when when they both took their time to pass on, they, they left their words of wisdom with Israel. And they said, if you continue to walk in the commandments of the Lord and to do his will and to obey his commandments and to walk in his statutes and to keep his days... That is to say, his, his solemn feasts and his feast days, then he will be with you and he will not remove you off of the land which he has given to your fathers. But Israel did not do that. Israel split into two tribes, or two kingdoms rather, not two tribes. And the tribes of Samaria began falling off to idol worship. Again, Ashtaroth, Chemosh, uh, Venus, a number of other gods the gods of the land of Canaan. And they forsook the God that had created them and were not mindful of their creator. And Judah did likewise. And they became weary of our father. Which is why that sentence is written. Thou hast become weary of me, O Israel. Verse 23. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings, Neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. In other words, you didn't bring your offerings to me as was required at the time. Luckily, now we don't have to do that anymore because Christ became our offering. But this still has the same connotation. Your offering now is supposed to be to God. Again, you're getting both the prophetical and or the uh, historical and the prophetical to our time type here. In other words, our honoring now is not cattle or burnt offerings. Our honoring now is our unrequited love to, to our Father. 
But they did not do this. Verse 24. Thou hast bought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. In other words, the people, the, this, this chosen people, this peculiar people, which God had chosen, had turned away from him and wearied him with their iniquities. And their iniquities were that they uh, accepted bribes for judgment. In other words, they were corrupt. For a bribe, they perverted judgment. They became liars. They believed in false doctrines. They worshipped false gods. And uh, much of that is still true even to this day. People put so many things before God and before God's word. Verse 25. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressors for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins, or the transgressions, not transgressors. Of course, there will be transgressors that are blotted out. But in other words, what he's saying here is, I am the one who blots out thy transgressions for my own sake. In other words, for, for his sake, for his love of his children. And will not remember your sins, thy sins. He made us a way to do that through our intercessor, Jesus Christ. And even before that, he did it. He gave us a way to atone for sin. And it was through the shedding of blood of an innocent animal, which is symbolic of the innocence of Christ. Verse 26. Put me into remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. In other words, God says, let's talk about it. Let's plead together and declare thou that you may be justified. Verse 27. Thy first father hath sinned, and the teachers have transgressed against me. Uh, the first father was Adam. And thy teachers have transgressed against me. In other words... Your uh, holy men, your uh, prophets, your seers, not the ones of God, but of the people, have transgressed against him. And how have they done this? Well, by teaching false doctrines. By teaching men to worship other gods upon high places. Verse thirty or 28. Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, and have given Jacob to the curse and Israel to reproaches. In other words, God is correcting his children. He gave Israel, I mean Jacob, to the curses that he promised would come upon him, that, Mom, that Moses told him about, or told the children of Israel about, and that Joshua told them about, and that even David warned them of in the end. And he gave Israel to the reproachers. In other words, he allowed Israel to be dispersed and to be taken off the good land that he had given to their fathers and to go into captivity and to be scattered amongst the heathen, which it was the heathen that took them into captivity. A lot of people say, well, if they were scattered amongst the heathen and you say they went to Europe, then that means Europe is the heathens. Well, not as such. Europe would be formed by those tribes on their migrations. Not to say that there were not other people there who were heathen. There were some. But you get the message here that God has fulfilled his promise. In other words, he told Israel, If you walk in my ways, I will be with you. If you walk contrary to me, Cursed shall you be when you go in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. And cursed shall be the fruit of thy basket, and cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. And it was cursed, because they went into captivity. They were taken as bondmen and bondwomen. And they were made, once the captivity was over, they did not return to the land of Samaria. They went north and west, towards Europe, and even some towards the east, and back around towards the west. Uh, Isaiah 44 in chapter 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Verse 2. 
For thus saith the Lord that made thee, and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, Fear, and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. And <coughs> Jeshurun is a um, pet name for Israel. Verse 3. And I will pour out water on him that is thirsty, and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and thy blessing upon thy offspring. In other words, you have sinned against me, Jacob, but I'm not going to forget you, I'm not going to forsake you, and I'm going to pour out my spirit upon your seed. And this will come to pass in a number of places. Um, when uh, the Holy Spirit spoke in Acts chapter 2 on Pentecost Day, that was the spirit being poured out. But this is more than just the Holy Spirit. It is his spirit upon those people that would accept the name of Christ. And my blessing on thine offspring. And what was his blessing? Well, look at the rich lands they have been given. Look at Europe and America and Canada and Australia and New Zealand and all the places they migrated to. Those have been a blessing. And they were blessed because they believed on the name of the Lord. Up until recently, most of Israel migrated and dispersed have been Christians. Save of some of the tribe of Dan and uh, those now who have uh, allowed the power of the Edomite and the Kenite to begin ruling over them through socialism a uh, system that this this very nation fought against and had Cold War against, communism, for many, many years. Now, our corrupt leaders with the minds of children are adopting and doing away with our Constitution and doing away with our rights and doing away with our freedoms. And what are they lifting up in their place? Uh, look at what's going on in the uh, Supreme Court right now. They're arguing again for gay marriage. How many times is this that gay marriage has gone up before the Supreme Court? It keeps getting struck down, but yet they keep going before it. And eventually they will succeed. Because now they have enough left-wingers on the Supreme Court that of course they're going to interpret the law by man's precedence and not by God's. And they're going to lift up immoral behavior and call it normal and commonplace. And they will give benefits and probably marriage rights to these alternative lifestyles. And they're going to reward them for doing wrong. And I could go into a host of scriptures about that, but I'm not going to right now. Verse 4. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water's courses. In other words, a willow that grows by the water's courses is going to grow strong. In other words, Israel is going to continue God's promise. In other words, that they would be as the stars of heaven and as the sands of the sea. If any man could count them. Verse 5. One shall say, I am the Lord's. And another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. In other words, uh, Israel. And another shall subscribe his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. In other words, you've got a prophecy from God here that some are going to call themselves by the Lord's name, by the name of Jacob. And by the name of Israel, so you've got the two houses. And uh, you've got uh, those that call themselves by the name of the Lord are going to call themselves by the name of the Lord God, Christians. And they're going to surname themselves by the name Israel. In other words, there will be a few who know who Israel is. 
And there will, call, there will be some that call themselves by the name Jacob. In other words, we're, we're for, referring to uh, those who will call themselves Jews. And some of them are real Jews of the tribe of Judah, of Jacob. But they also have a bad seed with them. A bad fig, as written in Jeremiah 24 and 35. And as Christ pointed out in John chapter 8, in Matthew 23, in Revelation 2 and 3, and a, and a host of other places which speak of the Kenite. Verse 6. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last. And besides me there is no God. And a lot of people don't really understand this, I am the first and I am the last. They think that there is a uh, span of time in which God will live and then no longer be. Uh, especially from the book of Revelation where it says, I am Alpha and Omega. But what this really means is, I am the first, I am the only God, and I am the last. In other words, I sum it up. I am God from time to times. There is no end to God, and there is no end to man if he uh, believes on the name of Christ and comes to God, or is converted in the millennium. They shall live perpetually, forever, salvation, eternally. And eternally means from now to as far as you can see, and beyond that, as far as you would be able to see a thousand million trillion times. Verse 7. And who, as I shall call, and shall declare it, and set in order for me, since I have appointed the ancient people? And the things that are coming, and shall come, let them show unto them. In other words, through Israel I will give you prophecy. I will show you the things that are going to come. And we're reading part of it right now in this book of Isaiah. Not to mention the volume of the book. In other words, God is a forewarner. He tells us of things to come. He warns us. He lets us know. He even let Israel know by the mouth of Moses what was going to happen to them if they quit following him. Yet, they quit following him. And his promise was fulfilled upon them. They were scattered. They were taken by the heathen. You know, anyone should draw from this that our Father always speaks the truth. And that what he says is going to come to pass. No matter what. Verse uh, 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told these, these these things from the time, or from that time? And have I declared and have declared it? Even ye are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. In other words, if God doesn't know of any other gods, then there are no other gods. And of course, like he said, he has declared it. He's prophesied it to us. He's risen up early and sent the message to us of what is coming. Verse 9. They that make graven image all of, are all of them vanity. In other words, emptiness. They're nothing. They're lifeless. They're dead without a dream. They're nothing. And their delectable things shall not profit. In other words, the things that they savor in the human flesh shall not profit them. And they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know, that they may be ashamed. In other words, they have no eyes to see and no ears to hear. Verse 10. Who hath formed a God, notice the lowercase g, or molten, a graven image, that is profitable for nothing? In other words, who are the ones that did this? Well, Israel did it a couple of times. And the heathen sure did it. There were heathen practices in the first place. 
Most of the time when you look at a people that are savage-like or heathen-like, they will take play, they will uh, indulge themselves in fleshly things or in the worship of false gods. And it doesn't matter what god it is. Even in Europe there were, there were pagan gods. Odin and Thor and the sun worshippers. And uh, even in Greece, the gods of Mount Olympus, which actually allude to the Nephilim, is where they uh, have their origins. But it doesn't matter. They're all nothing because they are not gods. They aren't even real. They're the creations of men, my, men's minds and men's hands. Verse 11. Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed. The workmen, they are of men. Let them be gathered together, let them stand up, yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. In other words, all these that worship false gods, and in this we have a type of what's going to happen when the Antichrist, the false god, comes. When the true Christ comes up, they're going to stand up together, and they're going to be in fear and in shame, and they shall be ashamed together. There's going to be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And they're going to pray for the mountains to fall on them. They're going to seek for death and not be able to find it. Why? Because they're going to be out of their flesh body. They're going to wish they were dead. They're going to be so embarrassed. Verse 12. The smith with the tongs both worketh in the coals, and fashion it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his yarn, arms. Yea, he is hungry. His strength faileth. He drinketh no water in his faint. In other words, he's hungry for the word of God. His strength faileth because he doesn't have God. And he drinketh no water in his faint. Again, what is the living water? This is speaking of those smiths that, that take tongs and put them in the fires of, and, and make molten images, in other words. And, and form it with hammers and worketh it with the strength of his arms. In other words, it's all for nothing. Verse 13. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule. He marketh it out with a line. He fitteth it in the plains. He marketh it out with the compass. He maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of man, that it re may remain in the house. Verse 14. He heweth down cedars, and taketh cypress of the oak, which he strengthened for himself among the trees of the forest, and planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Verse 15. Then it shall be for a man to burn, and he will take thereof and warm himself. Yea, he kindleth it, and baketh bread, and he maketh a god. In other words, he takes the wood that he uh, so is supposed to warm himself with, or to use to bake bread, and he makes a god out of it. And then worships it. And that's what the next line says. And worshipeth it. And he make a graven image and fall down there too. And we're not only talking about heathens here. We're talking about Israel. In other words, these men created their own gods. Imagine... Being an Israelite of that time, of course, even when he brought them out of brought them out of Egypt, they murmured against him. God killed many of them, even the sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, because they put strange fire on his altar. And he killed um, Kohath, Kohar, and uh, Abinadab, and um, not Abinadab, uh, Dathan, and. Uh, I believe it was Am... Well, I don't remember his name just now, but he opened up the world, earth and swallowed them because they wanted to be more than just the Levites that did liturgical duty to the tabernacle. In other words, they wanted more. They wanted to sit in the seat of Moses. Verse 16. He burneth part thereof with fire, and part thereof he eateth flesh, he roasteth a roast, and is satisfied. Yea, he warmeth himself, and say, Aha, I am warm. I have seen the fire. Verse 17. 
and the residue thereof he make, uh, maketh a god. In other words, he uses what he knows is something that will burn, wood, to cook with, and his stomach is satisfied, and yet he takes the rest of the wood and makes a god out of it. Even his graven image, and he falleth down to it and worship it, and pray unto it. And saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. Notice the lowercase g on that last word, God. <coughs> Verse 18. They have not known nor understood. For he has shut their eyes, they cannot see. Their hearts, they cannot understand. In other words, God has blinded them. Verse 19. And none considereth in his heart, and there is knowledge uh, nor understanding to say. I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And I shall make the residue of an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? In other words, to wood? In other words, you would have to be pretty blind to take a tree and cut part of it and shape it into something and call it your God. And you know, even Aaron, even Aaron did this. Moses' brother, the Levite, the head of the Levites, the father of the priests of Israel, did this. Verse 29. He feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart is turned in him aside. And he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? In other words, he feedeth on ashes. In other words, these, uh, these wooden idols will turn to ashes. Eventually they'll rot down if they don't burn. But he deceives his own heart and turns aside. And he cannot deliver his soul. Nor does he see, is, is this not a lie in my right hand? And do you know why the right hand is used here? Because your right hand is symbolic of what you work with. This is why the mark of the beast is received in your forehead, which is to say in your mind, or in your right hand. In other words, that you work with. Which is to say, if you are deceived by the Antichrist, you're going to work for him with your right hand. It's symbolic of your hands, period. But the right hand is symbolic of power. And these do not have the ability to see what they're doing, as God said. that They see, but they don't understand. They have eyes, but they're blind. Verse 21. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel, and thou, art not, or thou shalt not be forgotten of me. In other words, Israel would not be forgotten of God. Even when he cast them out of the land of Canaan, Judea, he did not forget them. He sent his son to them, and they were amongst the first to receive him. Verse 22. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed thee. Verse 30, 23. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout ye lower parts of the earth, and break forth into singing ye mountains, O forest, and every tree that is therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob, and glorified himself in Israel. Why, why would he glorify himself in Israel? Well, for the, mention, for the reasons I mentioned before. It would be Israel that would first receive the truth of Christ, but it would be of Israel, of the tribe of Judah, that God would come into the flesh as Emmanuel, Jesus Christ. In other words, of the king line, which is why he is the true king of Israel. Verse 24. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, that had formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretched forth the heavens alone. In other words, no one helped me, that spreadeth forth abroad the earth by myself. In other words, nobody helped me make earth. Nobody helped me make heaven. I alone did this. Verse 25. That frustrateth the tokens of liars and maketh diviners mad. 
and turn wise men backward and make their knowledge foolish. In other words, in comparison to God, but also those that uh, divine and um, of their own counsel. In other words, false gods, verse 26. That confirmeth the word of his servant, and performeth the counsel of his messengers, and saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited. And to the cities of Judah, ye shall be built. And I will raise up the decayed places thereof, that is to say, the desolated places thereof. Uh, verse 27. That saith to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up the rivers. Verse 28. And that saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd. Now the name uh, Cyrus, of course, means the possessor of the furnace, but this is talking about Cyrus, the king of Persia, who would defeat Babylon and send the exiles of uh, the tribe of Judah and Jerusalem back to their homeland and help them restore the temple. And Cyrus is one of the only people that was named by God before his birth even, that shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple the foundation shall be laid. And of course, this is after it was destroyed by Babylon uh, when they took the children into captivity. At any rate, I think this is a uh, good place to stop for this particular Bible study. And we will pick this up in the next lecture, uh, Isaiah verse 45. And <clears throat> as always, my good brothers and sisters in Christ, it is my prayer for you that you will dig deep into this word and study it and learn its hidden secrets. Learn the meanings, the manners of speech. Learn the Hebrew language. This is not to say that you will have to learn to speak Hebrew, but break these words back to the Hebrew so that you can understand the thought being conveyed. And when you get to the New Testament, do the same with Greek. This is the only way that you can prove the Bible to yourself and understand the things written therein. And always, always ask our Father to lead you and guide you as you study His Word and to reveal these deeper secrets to you and to show you the way and to shine the light upon you that you stumble not nor fall into darkness of deception. May our Father bless you in all your studies, those of you who's who care. And as for the rest, may our Father be, be merciful unto you. And those of you who study, always pray for those who do not have the sight, that their eyes may be open to the truth. And plant seeds with them, because you never can tell when one will grow. They won't all grow, but a few will. And that way you can earn, earn your righteous, righteous acts in heaven. At any rate, may our Father bless you in all your studies as you diligently seek his counsel and his face from this, his most holy word, which he has given us with sayings from aforetime, telling us the events of the future. Thank you for listening. This has been Just Thoughts.